Hi, I'm here at beautiful Albion Hills Community Farm on Father's Day. The birds are twittering, the sky is blue, and they're having a yurt workshop. And this is the yurt that they had pre-assembled and slept in on Friday night. So let's go wander over there and see what those guys are up to. Hi, this is Matt. Hey, how's it going? Do you have a company name? Indigo Yurt Co. There you go. And this is Nate. Hello. And you're from North Bay too. With, That's right. And you make good yurts. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> and you're making a door. I'm just going to start by fastening this together. So we're just using some glue and then we're going to screw the corners. So when we take it apart, will that be one piece? This is going to be one solid piece, yeah. Poles, you, you don't want them coming in perpendicular, no. you need them all to point right to the yeah. center. Mm -hmm. So that's, I'm going around with the string here and lining up against it, just kind of giving you a little bit of a guideline here with this line, yeah. so when you're drilling in, you kind of have to match your drill bit to this angle as well as the angle on the jig, you're 50 degrees in, so you know this would come in at this angle, lined up with this and lined up with that. Like that, and you shave it like you peel so it, and also, so there are two things we're doing: we're getting the bark off, which we've already done on this one, and now we're trimming this down so it can fit in one of those holes. Here, so we're going to drill our holes right through right now before we rip it so that we get all the holes drilled so that we're not ripping it into strips and then drilling a whole bunch of holes. This is the figure eight knot and this is the, the knot that we'll use throughout uh, the whole time process. So it's exactly what it is, the figure eight. So you do an overhand loop, you do a back, go behind, you have your figure eight and then you come up through your overhand loop. And again, you're continuing, you still got your figure eight and then you, you tighten it up and the knot itself uh, resembles a figure eight as well. Um, so if you've ever done any belaying or climbing, it's very similar. They do the figure eight knot, double figure eight for your um, belaying cords. Um, and so that's the basic knot. It's a stopper knot, it holds very tight um, and it, it doesn't come undone or fray. So you pull it through right to the end. Um, once you have a couple tied on here, it holds itself on your plant. Um, so now, Probably what's easiest is to, to cut it and then finish your knot. So you just kind of eyeball it. I usually do about to the next to the next hole is, is plenty long. Um, so to the next hole, and then again, this you'll do this a hundred times before tie another figure eight knot before you get going on the next one. You'll get going and you pull it all the way through and you'll be like, da 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 and then same thing, so you tie a figure eight stopper knot on this one as well. Um, so you tie your figure eight and then tie it in. So now this one you're gonna want a little tight. So that would be way too loose, right? So that's where the needle nose comes in. And again, once you've done a few, you get kind of a, there's a you get a hang of it. And so you hold it, you hold it in tight with the needle nose. And then you can tie up your knot so that it doesn't come on. And, and it doesn't, it's not going to be perfect, you're not going to have like, you know, it's not going to be super tight as if you took a knot and, and tightened it up and things like that. Um, but see, that's the whole point, you got a little bit of flex and a little bit of play to it. Um, and then, so yeah, so you continue to do that for each, each one as we go through.
So lunch is over now and the sky is still a beautiful blue. Anyway, they've started assembling this wonderful yurt. And so this is this is the first little trick of the building of the yurt. Like that's just too low. We're gonna have to bring the walls in for sure. Um, but you know, like like look look how the difference here, right? So there's a little bit of adjusting kind of going on as we as we get some of this set up. So this is like this beautiful sewing machine that um, Matt sews the canvas that goes around the yurt on. It's like amazing. I learned how to sew on one of these. It has, operates with no electricity. They're hard to come by actually. Um, yeah, see? Treadle. It's pretty cool. Again, evidence of yurts for going back 4,000 plus years. So they they were part of a culture. Families were raised in yurts for generations. They would give them away as a wedding gift. That would be the uh, the big thing. You'd get a yurt, and um, and it, and and often the skeleton itself would pass down from from father to son. And through the ages, you'd repair a piece and a piece there. But the yurt itself, which would last quite a long, quite a while. The, well, the yurt, the yurt itself used to be part of the Mongolian lifestyle and integrated into everything um, in terms of just their, their house, their spirituality, their living, playing, everything. Uh, so one of the things that they use the uh, yurt for is when they have the crown open, um, the cover off the crown, and the sun would shine across because they would set the, uh, the door to the east. So as the sun uh, moved across the sky, the um, pattern that was against the wall from the reflection or the, the shadow of the crown would give an indication of how long in the day it was, how, how it was getting on, if it was, you know, lunch or if the end of the day was coming soon and it gave them an idea, a sense of time, essentially. 